all love watching somebody fly up and down the fretboard because let's face it, it looks cool. And it is cool, but I also believe that being able to access any note within a key without moving your hand around all that much is also pretty cool. Changing chords along with a piece of music without moving up and down the neck all that much is a great way to start building some skills along those lines. And today we're gonna get into that with a little thing that I like to call chord clusters. Before we get into it, we've got a guitar to give away. So hold on one second. This Lerve OM-03 is being given away. I announced it a couple weeks ago and I wanted to say thank you for helping get VGI to its fifth year of premium membership. You guys are awesome and I just wanted to say thank you. So now to announce the lucky winner. The lucky winner is Steven Munchen in New York. Steven, congratulations. I'll be reaching out to you. We'll get this thing from me to you and I hope you enjoy it. And to everyone that entered, thank you so much. And again, everyone, who's out there watching and hanging out with BGI every single week. I really appreciate it. But now we got a guitar lesson to get into, so let's do it. Let's get started with our first chord group, or we're gonna call it a chord cluster, because to me, all the notes are kind of right there under your fingers, they're ready to be played, and you don't have to move your hands so much. So everything's just kind of clustered together within a position, and I'll show you how to switch positions and really start moving the chords around the fretboard. We're gonna use the key of G as our example, and we need a one chord, four chord, and five chord to get through most 12 bar blues jams, and our one chord is going to be G, but we can also play that F on top there and get a G7 sound, make this nice and bluesy. Our four chord is four notes up the scale, the G major scale, G, A, B, C is the fourth note, so we're going to play C7 there, and then our five chord is one further, C up to D, but instead of playing a D major like this, or maybe see it fretted this way, what we're going to do is move that D down to a C, and we've got a D7, that nice blues that we want, seventh chords here. G7, C7, and D7, all right? And really just that quick little strum through, you may have noticed that my fingers move, certainly, but my hand is not moving. I'm not having to jump from here all the way up to you know another spot on the fretboard to catch the chord. Everything is right under your fingers. You've gotta get the fingering down and the shape of the chord down, but you're not moving your hand. And what we're really doing is playing these three chords in this position. All right, so we're sticking with the open position. We call it the open position because we've got open strings ringing and kind of helping us out here. Now we're gonna play a very short example, just moving through these chords in a bluesy sort of progression, but it's a super short progression. Feel free to take this and run with it and insert it into a 12 bar blues progression to get some real practice with this. Here we go. All right, nothing earth shattering there. We're just strumming through some chords in the open position, but things get really interesting when we move this idea of chord clusters to a closed position. So let's do that with our second example. We're gonna move up to this G7 voicing here. This is an E shape, if you're familiar with the caged system, because it kind of looks like, if we make this a G major, kind of looks like open E major chord here, okay? So we've got our G7, and instead of just saying, okay, I know a bar chord for G7, I'll play it here instead of the open, then when I move to C, I'll move down here. Instead, you can play a C that doesn't require you to move your hand like I just did. We can play our G7 here, and then our C7 just under it with an A shape C7 chord from an A chord, it's an A7, but if we convert that to a major, that's where we get the shape concept from, or the name for, all right? But we're up here in C. And now, for our five chord, we could certainly move this up, play D7, but we wanna to stick to this chord cluster, really because it's kind of the wax on, wax off of getting to know a position and being really comfortable in any given position. So instead of moving out of position here, let's play a 
C sharp with our D in the root, so that gives us a D7 chord, right? So now we can play through an example with G7, C7, and then D7 without moving out of this position. All right, let's give a listen to our example. This is example number two. All right, I hope that you are seeing the power of this. I think there's tremendous value in being able to play in any given position. And we're gonna continue learning that by moving our example, sticking with the key of G, but now up to the fifth position. We're gonna use some different chord shapes in order to do that. We're gonna start by building our G7 chord off of this G, fourth string, fifth fret. All right, if we look around, we can find our notes here. This is a D shape, really a D7 shape, if we're using that caged method to kind of categorize and, and give us a framework for these chord shapes. So there's our G7, and if we want to find a C7, we can find this here, which this one might be a little bit of a leap, but this is actually a G shape for the C7. It doesn't look like that big G chord, but look at this. Kind of replace the nut with our finger here just for the visual you can see that g7 kind of happening here but we move that up here with the root on the third string we've got a c7 all right and then now we need a d7 again we could just move this shape up a step to get to d7 and that's totally cool but that did shift us a little bit on the fretboard not a problem but if we want to stick with our chord clusters and know where that D7 is without really moving, it's right here and it comes from the A shape with our D on the fifth string, fifth fret, all right? So now we can get through example three with these chord shapes for G7, C7, and then D7. All right, let's get another chord cluster example under our belt. We're gonna build this next one, four, and five chord progression off of the G7 here around the 10th fret. And tying this back to caged, we've got a C7 shape here, right? It looked a whole lot like your regular day one C chord here. Make it a C7, and then we just move that root all the way up to G, We've got a G7. So now we've got to find our C7 chord, and there's a C right there, so we could play that E shape, that bar chord. All right, and what I like to do a lot when I'm playing uh, blues, acoustic blues, is use this little mini shape. It comes right from that big bar chord, but it's a heck of a lot easier to grab. Uh, and you can also get the C in the bass if you move your thumb over and play on the sixth string. It's a very cool little shape. Uh, you're gonna hear this in you know, Kind Hearted Woman Blues and, and things like that. So it's a great shape to get to know. Then for D7, again, we could just move this up and we've got a D7, but we're gonna try to keep things right within our cluster and that D7 is back a fret. That's our G shape for D7, very much like this was the G shape for C7, okay? I hope all this is making sense. It's pretty easy when you're talking about cages to get lost in kind of alphabet soup, but you've got to tie it back to hopefully something that you're already very familiar with, like the open position chords, C, A, G, E, and D. You just have to refinger that stuff, and then you've got a movable chord shape. That's where all of this is coming from. All right, for our final example, we're gonna build our G7 chord here at the 10th fret, but this time we're going to use an A shape. So instead of building it at the 10th fret and sort of going back this way with our fingers, 
we're going to change that to an A shape, which is basically like that bar chord, right? Just your typical power chord deal. But we're making sure to bar and catch that third string at the 10th fret. So there's our G7. C7 is this D7 shape. All right, makes a whole lot of sense. We know things repeat at the 12th fret. So if we just move this up to D, that's basically that, all right? Hopefully just showing you how this all relates will, will help to solidify this idea of these movable chord shapes, right? So we're here in C7, and then we need a D7, and that we're going to catch right here. Right? It's very much like we did in the last example, but here we've moved it up into D7. This is coming from the uh, big old E uh, shape bar chord. All right, so now we've got an example that we can cover in this 10th position. Here we go. This one skill was huge for my personal development. I think that it will really help you out on the guitar as well. If you spend some time and really learn even just a few of these clusters, the next time you're jamming along with a 12 bar blues, I bet you'll start to explore different ways of playing the same old chords, and it will really help you start to conquer the maze of the fretboard. If you dig this, then give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and consider hitting that subscribe button, and come on back next Tuesday for another lesson. I'll see you then. Until then, practice smart and play on.